Yes, lads, what is going on? Welcome back to another episode of the Under 23 Sorry Road to Glory, episode 11 today. And as you might notice in the background, we do have a new little addition, a little Yu Gi Oh card that I bought in, yeah, in the last week or so that I thought would, yeah, break up the, well, I guess it's the, the left side of the screen for you as you're watching it, but it's on, it's to my right. Yeah, welcome to the series, lads. Welcome to another episode. Um, yeah, international break is finally over, almost. It's Thursday. Whilst you, you're probably watching this, and yeah, this weekend now is is back to um, yeah club football, which is a, a relief if I'm being honest. I've enjoyed the international break, like it's been good. I've enjoyed it, but from like a road to glory perspective, it's been you know it's been quiet, which is understandable. Um, I have been playing a bit of of rivals. I haven't really had the best of of luck slash results in there, which we'll get into. But yeah, you know, nothing to look back on in, in this episode in that sense. Like we're not going to be yeah looking back on any SO5 lineups per se, but We've got a lot to look forward to. So yeah, hope you enjoy the video. Leave a like if you do. Subscribe if you are new to the channel. And if you're completely new to Sora and you are yet to sign up, there is a link in the description of this video that will get you £50 worth of free market credits once you purchase your first five cards from the auctions. Now, I have updated the spreadsheet to reflect the current floor prices of the Road to Glory right now. Most notably, Dion Bello, by the way, £1.79. His floor price is £6 right now. I'm very, very tempted to sell into that because that feels like, you know, two, 300% profit there um, that we could potentially cash in on. And I, I feel like I, I yeah, I feel like I, I'm, we might have to sell him. Let me know what you think in the comment section, but that feels like a bit of a, a big jump up. He's been on fire the last couple of games. And uh, yeah, it looks like he could be a decent sell. Sago's gone up in price a little bit as well. Tom Krause, since we paid 60 pence for him, his floor is now £1.41. So we're looking we're looking healthy. We obviously sold Topi in the international break. We cashed in nearly £4 worth of profit on him. And we're currently looking at a gallery value of just under 25 quid with the same cash balance as we had after selling Topi. You would have seen that um, exact balance uh, in the last episode. So we haven't bought or, or sold anyone since. Um, and yeah, gallery values, you know, in a healthier position. I think it was at about 20 quid uh, at the start of the international break in episode 10. Episode 11 today, you know, nine or, nine or, nine or so days on. And uh, yeah, it looks like we've increased the gallery value by, you know, by floor price of about 20%, which makes sense to me. Because I said it in the last episode that it felt like we're on a bit of a low in that, you know, nobody plays for two weeks, basically, any of our cards anyway. So it seems like, yeah, they're bubbling up a little bit now. FOMO's starting to kick in and... Yeah, prices are kind of climbing back to kind of where we were, I think, before the international break. Yeah, we're, we're looking healthy. We've got a, bu a bucket load of midfielder options for this weekend. Um, we've only got one defender option because Vega and Portugal aren't playing this weekend. So, yeah, we're, we're down to Affengreber, but he has a good fixture from what I remember. So, yeah, we're looking pretty. The only one thing that I was maybe going to do, seeing as though this weekend it is the Croatian uh, special and obviously we have an in-season Dakovic and I think somebody's mentioned it before in the comments to say like why don't you sell your in-season Dakovic and buy the classic version which on paper makes sense for most cards but for some reason with goalkeepers there's not that much of a difference between the in-season and classic price especially on Dakovic right now they're like they're both floating around the seven pounds mark so if there was a price discrepancy like say if the in-season the one I own was at a tenner and the classic version was at like six or seven quid I'd probably then scalp it and probably sell the in-season and, and buy the classic and bank the two, three pounds profit. Um, so in, you know, in theory, that does work if I'm not playing in-season, which I'm not. Uh, but yeah, there's not much difference. So yeah, there, there's not much that we really need to do, to be honest, other than maybe sell um, Dion Bello. Also, I will let you guys know I am giving away another card in this video. So stick around towards the end of the video. I'll let you know who I'm giving away and how you get involved. But yeah, we've got nothing to sort of look back on. We've got the same setup as we've had since game week 10, since we sold Topi, since we brought in Tom Kraus. And yeah, things are looking pretty, pretty, lads, to be honest. Pretty, pretty. Is that, is that a combination of words? Maybe. Maybe I've just made it up. But I think we'll just sort of get stuck into um, some lineup building right now. And then we'll go over to Predictor 5, see if our players are, are set to play. But Dakovic has a home fixture. Sibinek are at home to Ozcheck, who haven't really been great recently. So I'm relatively confident in, um, in him. And one little addition that you might notice that I'm starting to use now is this home um, away adjusted so basically on sorry data if you uh, go into preferences and and toggle this home away adjusted it'll basically let you know that in you know the the line uh, sorry in the games that are underlined um those were his scores in 
home fixtures effectively because they play at home this weekend and they'll um and so Adeto will kind of yeah show you how he scored at home i mean bar the first game 80 73 66 so he has a decent track record um and yeah i'm pretty confident in in what he could bring this weekend david affengrubber at home our only option um he plays at home to sport in Hion, which is a good fixture la liga 2 doesn't uh, like doesn't stop playing during the international break so affengrubber did play scored 28 points um so yeah positive nil nil draw at home hopefully they can replicate that next game and then here's where the potential contemplations come in so you know we know bass is kind of unfortunately just yeah out of out of favor right now despite a really good home fixture for sparta and then yeah clarkson's away to celtic really really tough game kenzo is away to millwall not necessarily an incredibly tough game but not easy bulat is at home to shalawa not bad but really lacking those decisives and then tom kraus our 60 pence wonder kid <laughs> triple a pick score that's got to be the cheapest uh triple a pick score that anyone's ever bought <laughs> 60 pence yeah luton at home to watford great fixture for them he's been good the last couple so he's a no-brainer for me and then we've got our forward options in in sago and, and Belo. Belo's at home to hartberg and then sago is at home to gorica so two really good fixtures which i would fancy both to do well in so we can go over to predictify and see if there's any uh croatian prediction so there's not i'm filming this on wednesday because i have a really busy day thursday so yeah i'm having to film this on wednesday normally yeah i do on thursday and we have predictions basically on on, on every team and, and every league effectively on on predictify but they they don't right now because i'm doing it early so i'm yeah it's kind of my fault that i'm doing that but we do have rapid vienna lineups and or prediction sorry and dion bello is 80 percent on to play which is perfect for us so i think he's a lock if i don't sell him he's a definite lock like i said his his last couple of games um, assist here 8.8 AA and then a goal here 17 AA is really really encouraging five shots on target is mental by the way so then the only contemplation for me really is Sago which we'll find out a little bit more about as far as you know if we think or if the predictors think he's gonna he's gonna definitely play or not um, and then it's yeah basically him Bulat or, or Kenzo I think Bulat probably gets the nod if if Sago isn't 100% on to play as far as how the predictors see it we'll have a little look at um Bulat because he's normally pretty nailed on to play isn't he but like I said he hasn't really been amazing no, he's 95 percent on so he couldn't be any any more nailed on according to the projections over on predict the fire which is yeah which is relatively useful so I to think he's 100 percent on to play as well so we'll definitely take that I think that's the safer play for now and I'd I'd probably captain Bello to be honest I'd fancy a couple of DAs there like I'm, I'm not normally someone that loves captaining uh, forwards just because like most of the time they very uh, they struggle to get like all around score like it, you know these days getting your captaincy right is like the most important thing in Sora like when you're lineup building and stuff and yeah, yeah like you really need your captain to be getting like high 70s and above ideally because yeah otherwise it just becomes it becomes really tough but you know what I'm gonna say lads <laughs> five home fixtures and it would still be five home fixtures even if we played Sago as well. So it screams potentially our best score ever. Like I'm kind of predicting now, hold me to it, that this might be our highest score of the series, of the season. With all those fixtures, with how they are as far as... I know they're all, like, just because they're home, it don't mean they're good fixtures. But they're, they're home and they're all good fixtures. Maybe the, the shallow R fixture isn't amazing as far as the uh, probabilities for Standard Liège to win that one. But if we... So turn that into Sago, it turns into, you know, a 56% win percentage. So ideally, I want to go in with this. But if there's worry or doubt around Sago, I probably won't risk it. And I'll probably go with Bulat because, yeah, Sago did come off the bench last game. It was against Dynamo, so maybe they didn't feel like they needed him in that sort of game, which is understandable. But in a home fixture, you know, at home to Gorica, you'd like to think he'd be, he'd be utilized. But what do I know? That's probably what we're going to go in with. We did get relegated last game week, which is yeah not a problem. We don't we don't mind the uh, the division three challenge. I'm just having a yeah there we go. So division three, and we've got a division four entry as well. I think with the the lineup we've got or the potential lineup we've got, we've got to be going into division three with a lot of confidence there. Just over two thousand players right now. Top twenty five percent get boxes, and then top two hundred and thirty five players get a card. Okay, you can hold me to this one. I predict. We finish in that top 235 this weekend. And if we don't, I'll give away two cards next in next week's episode. So I'll give away one anyway, but I'll be giving away another one on top to make that two giveaways or two cards given away in episode 12. Hold me to that. If we, uh, yeah, if we don't, if we don't hit top 
235 if I'm proven wrong. If I'm sticking my neck on the line and saying, um, yeah, we'll, we'll definitely hit top 235 this weekend with the with the lineups and with the uh, with the lineup, sorry, and with the matchups we have. So we might as well just throw our throw our lineup in for now. And yeah, Division Three is all locked and loaded. Like I said, we've got nothing to kind of you know look back on this weekend, uh, on this past weekend because it was international break, of course. But I will do. I, I think somebody mentioned it a few weeks ago, and I, I haven't really done it recently. But I do. I, I mean, I do like doing it. It's just doing a bit of scouting for this weekend. Basically, there might be a couple of you guys that um, are in need of some players for under twenty three potentially. So I'm going to go over to the pick scores on on Sora Data. I'm just going to have a little look through, you know, who's rated quite highly this weekend, who's expected to score pretty well between all four positions, goalkeeper, midfielder, defender and forward. And then we'll probably, yeah, close the close the episode off there. But I'm looking for, like, value, basically. I'm not looking for, like, Yamal or, you know, Haaland. Like, those, those are the obvious ones. I think Struka's there is really catching my eye at seven quid. I don't know whether you can pick up his forward card for that. I can actually... Well, I'm going to have a look because... He has forward and mid cards. Let's have a look if you can pick up his forward card. Uh, no, well, yeah, you can't pick up his forward card for seven quid. I mean, you, yeah, you can pick up his midfielder card, which is still quite good. But he shows up as a forward here because his new card is a forward, basically. But anyway, he's playing against his old club, so don't be surprised if he if he gets a DA or two this weekend. I'm sure you'll be, um, yeah, raring to go there. But he's not technically a forward unless you want to pay in season prices. Uh, what else have we got in the forward department? Jack Clark at home to Everton, Triple A. I do like Ivankovic, uh, Ivanovic, sorry. Franjo is yeah a player that I've I've owned. Well, I do own now in in rare and super rare. Really, really rate him. He got a move from Rijeka. I think I'm pronouncing that right now. If there's any Croats watching, um, I was calling it Rijeka, but apparently it's not that. So I do. Apologize there, but he's at home to Genk and again, sorry, and they, he plays for USG. I'm just looking. His classic fo floor price is a fiver, so I think he could be quite interesting. I'll be playing my my Franjo this weekend in rare and super rare, but yeah, he's not part of the road to glory necessarily. He's a pretty interesting one. Nigren's a really, really good one as well. He's nine pounds, though. I think he has quite um, a limited supply of cards just because he doesn't have any minted cards playing in playing in Denmark right now. Luis Enrique has been really good for Brazil over this over this break. Callum hudson Adoy's is a well, six quid. That's not terrible. Jesus Ferreira at one pound forty. That that is funny. But MLS is almost over. I don't think I would yeah put too much into that. Let's have a look at mids. I, I mean I mentioned Strukas. Strukas is is probably as far as yeah pound for pound goes one of the better options. Bogus at four quid. But again MLS finishes quite soon. What else do we have? Aaron Zetner is a really good player. But he's seventeen quid. A dozy is not bad. Esposito is an absolute baller. He's stupidly expensive. Sangare, 12 quid. There's big Tom Kraus, £1.40 floor. It's got to be. That's got to be road to glory effect in, in force there, isn't it? Aidan Morris, I don't think he's completely nailed to start this weekend, though, but I could be wrong. The Ketele hasn't really been on it. Yari at a 6 quid. That's, that's not terrible. Jack McGlynn's pretty cheap. He's a good player, but again, MLS. Paxton Aronson could be okay. A way to Groningen. £2.82. I don't mind that. Bonsu Bar, if he starts for Genk, he's pretty um he's pretty handy. Tavernier or Tavernier, sorry, he could be he could be really nice at home to Lask, one pound twenty one. I do like that. I think he scored really well in his last game. Let's have a quick little look. Yeah, twenty uh twenty AA with a goal. Very, very good score. He's pretty cheap. If we go to defence, let's see who we've got this weekend. Yuri Bass, if he plays, could be quite good for a fiver. Montiel, I don't really know. Which Montiel is this? Uh, he plays for Argentinos Juniors. Oh, he's been, well, he's been playing striker. <laughs> That's an interesting one. Um, Bart Van Rouge, he's not bad for seven seven quid. Big Mike for two pounds at home to Almir City. For Sparta, that, that might be quite lucrative. Burnaby's been really good in the Brazilian league. Alan Montes for a pound if you want to get involved in, in Mexico. Barisic for three quid. That doesn't seem terrible. He was scoring like really well. He's gone off the boil a little bit, kind of. I mean, his last game was really good, actually. But 11 AA, 24, not amazing. But before that, he was he was really doing well. So, yeah, it could be, could be an opportunity there to get in on, on a bit of a low. Um, and then we'll do goalkeepers to finish us off before before we go. I need to explain the, the road to glory, uh, the, road to glory the, uh, the giveaway as well. So, yeah, don't let me forget that. Goalies are tough. Like, you're never going to find stupidly cheap goalies in under 23. Like, Tani's cheap because, yeah, the J-League finishes in a couple of months. 
Trendela, 11 quid. Good fixture this weekend as well, actually. But his scores haven't been amazing. Like, they've been fine. Like, when he gets a clean sheet, he scores really well. Like, he's in the 80s. But if he doesn't, he seems to struggle. But that, yeah, that's not a terrible, a terrible one. Top Laysom for 6 quid. I know he... I'm a big Laysom fan. He hasn't really been scoring that well recently. But for 6 quid, he's getting into Road to Glory territory there, actually, you know. So, I'm definitely keeping an eye on that one. Uh, Robin Roofs is back in for NEC. 11 quid. Don't know if he's prom well, maybe he's worth that. Um Tangsvik's nine quid, but yeah, season's almost done for them. Schulter's eight quid, but again, MLS is almost done. I mean, I know he hasn't been scoring well, but I'd probably go looking at Layson. Layson or Schrendler there, to be honest, if we're if we're talking sort of bargain players. Let's end it on the giveaway then. So I did mention I will be giving away a card in this video, like we did last last time round. I will be giving away this Adam Holzerk. Uh, who's on to start this weekend, I think. I looked on uh, Predictify early, and I'm pretty sure the big man is expected to play at yeah, 90% on, so we're hoping he gets gets a start this weekend. He's at, like he's five quid. Like He's an expensive, relatively expensive card. Big thanks to Tom for donating the card to be given away. Tom's one of the, the members uh, on the channel. But yeah, Adam Holzik's going to be going to one of you guys before Friday, before the deadline, so you can use him this weekend. Under 23 forward. All I need you guys to do is let me know your Surrey Gallery name in the comment section. Leave a like on the video, and that will be your entry into the giveaway. I'll just let, uh, yeah, I'll just send an, an offer to one of you guys at random, and uh, yeah, we'll, we'll go from there. But yeah, it's been an absolute pleasure, lads. Good luck this upcoming weekend, and yeah, hopefully, I'm praying. Well, I mean, if I don't get top 235, you guys get another card basically. So it's a win-win. You either see me succeed and the the gallery succeed which ends up getting given away to you guys at the end of the season anyway, or we don't get top 235 and I give away two cards um, Yeah, in the, next, in the next episode. So hope you enjoyed the video, lads. Massive good luck this weekend, and I shall see you guys in the next one.